Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a mixed media piece and I'm going to work in this art journal because I really wasn't sure what I was doing and um, I just wanted to do this um, spur of the moment and that was what was laying on my desk. So I'm going to use this um, piece of art journal paper and I'm going to put a image on this piece of tissue paper and this is how I go about that. I place the tissue paper on a piece of regular uh, copy paper and I tape the top and the two sides and you have to be careful not to get um, the tape stuck into your printer so when you um, line up the tape be very careful that you don't have any hanging off the excess now on the top I have some hanging off the excess and I'm going to fold it over and that gives it a real real crisp firm um, edge there so it goes through my printer really well the only thing I knew I wanted on this uh, piece of mixed media art was going to be a windmill. Um, I've had this idea in my in my mind for quite a while and today was the day to unload my mind. So I printed three windmills on tissue paper. One was too big, one was too small and one was just right. So I went with the third one and of course I kept the two others for any different project that may arise. I've got some wallpaper scraps here that I ripped and I'm going to use some of this tissue paper by Tim Holtz. I have two kinds. This one has the butterfly on it and I was trying to find a name for it and this one here is the postal edition and I'm going to go ahead and use the postal because I liked that script that was there um, for the background that's going to be up in the sky. I didn't need the full piece so I just cut the bottom off and of course I'm going to save that in my stash for a future project. So I'm going to put that down with matte medium and I'm going to put some underneath and on top of course and go ahead and work with my wallpaper pieces also and create a really cool background so here we go matte medium and a soft brush and I had kind of a lot of matte medium here but I made it work I didn't waste a drop of it putting my um, tissue paper down my Tim Holtz tissue paper and again that was called postage I'll try and find it and link it below but just getting my surface ready to put that down all right lining it up with my top edge and then I'm just going over the tissue paper with my brush and more matte medium giving it a good coat there so everything is sealed down and now I'm going to use uh, my wallpaper scraps here I pulled out three kinds um, there's a tannish color a light tan and then an off-white and what I wanted to do with these is create a landscape scene for my windmill to set on and um, we're going to add a lot of charcoal pencil and we're going to use a stencil by Sean Petit and that is going to be Trees 3 I believe. Yes it is. Trees 3 is the stencil that we're going to use. So I just ripped the wallpaper to create that jagged edge and now I'm using that matte medium to go ahead and stick all of those down. If you put matte medium on the back and put that down, it will um, help with air bubbles. So you want to put it on the back and then you want to go over the top of the 
um, item you're sticking down with the matte medium and it should help with the air bubbles so I'm giving it just a good coat and I was thinking about letting everything dry but I figured I am going just to uh, continue on and put down a little bit of gesso first I wanted to cut off those edges so we could see what we were doing there I'm back and now there was a lump there from the underside of the wallpaper so I ripped a couple more scraps of the off-white wallpaper and I'm going to use some as clouds and I'm also going to use that one down on the bottom left to fix that large bump that we have there and this would just add another element of texture in our landscape scene so it will work just fine and I cut the edges off with my scissors and now we can see what we're actually going for here now we're going to use some gesso and we're going to put that in the sky and you'll be able to see uh, what's happening here for the background just giving it a good dry and I picked out some colors there you can see on the left hand side I have a chalky blue for the sky and I have a tan and then a just a little bit of a light brown for the landscape and also the trees here's my big jug of gesso and I'm just going to pour some of that in the cap and we're going to like I said put it in the sky to push that text a little bit back just putting that on with a soft brush and I'm not covering it 100% I do like to see some of that uh, pattern from the tissue paper in the background it just adds another element uh, to your piece and a layer of texture and interest just giving a quick wipe over the bottom portion and um, putting a little bit of gesso down for some grit because we're going to add some more paint and it will all come together you'll see in the end here is my light tan I'm going to add that to the bottom then we're going to go to a darker tan and then a bit of blue in the sky using the same brush that I had my gesso on it's perfectly fine just using a cover from a jar for a palette there it works out really well and it's um, nice to be able to reuse some of that packaging and um, not throw things just right into the landfill so you can see how my landscape is coming along I think you can see uh, the different elements there and I'm just kind of dry brushing with some of those different colors of brown and here is going to be our blue and it is an actual actually it's a chalk paint by plaid and the color is oops it's by artful minds art minds the chalk paint and it is slate gray and i thought that would be neat for a, a pre-winter sky um, everything is changing right now where I live in Wisconsin and it was really really windy this weekend and now it is all died down and it is calm and I think we're supposed to get a little bit of cold coming towards us wiping a little bit of that paint off of the cloud area to keep it white and adding just a little bit tiny tiny bit of a darker blue there so we have some different elements in the sky 
Now, as I am doing this video, my husband is working on new lighting for my craft room. So that is exciting. So hopefully by the time I create my next piece, which you will see uh, the first weekend in November on Saturday, I should have some new lighting in my craft room. And that is really great because uh, just with the change of seasons, the light comes through my windows a different way and it's just um, not working out the way I liked it to. I have several lights in my craft room, but uh, I'm investing in just something new. So hopefully that will work. Let me know. I won't tell you when I have my new lighting. I'm going to let you tell me. So if you do see that I have new lighting in my craft room, you comment. I would really like to know if it has made a difference or not. I'm using Sean Petit's Trees 3 stencil and I'm just putting some trees way in the distance there. This is a oak tree or it could be a maple. Maple or oak tree. I think it's a maple. In the background there and I'm going to do excuse me some um, evergreens over to the right and it just uh, gives something more for your eye to focus on than this big windmill that I'm going to put in the foreground. So I'm just adding a little bit of darker brown to that tree to give it some dimension and of course we will go back with my charcoal pencils and I believe I even do use some soft pastels so that will also be in the video. Now I'm using a darker green. The green I am using is by Deco Art and it is Hauser Dark Green and that's an Americana Deco Art paint and a real nice um, green for pre-winter scenes and of course we're going to get into Halloween. Whoop, Halloween is over. That was yesterday. Sorry. We're going to get into the um, Christmas, pre-Christmas and things of that nature. I have a couple ideas um, rolling around. Of course we're going to have to get out our cardinals. There's been people asking for cardinal mixed media pieces and I definitely will go ahead and do that in the near future. And then I had a request for a snowman and um, I will work on figuring that out. So yeah, some things in the works. And I hope that you would like to comment and subscribe. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you back. I do a video on Tuesdays, which is usually mixed media art. And I do a video uh, almost every Saturday. Sometimes I miss when I get busy or too busy. And um, that is usually art journal related. So yeah, Saturday I'll have something coming up. I have no idea yet what we're going to do. Just putting those trees there in the background and we are going to get ready for our windmill and we're going to put that on next. I apologize, I forgot to turn off my fan. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's I've got sun coming through my front windows right now and it heats my craft room up quite a bit. So I apologize if you could hear that fan in the background. I had a lot of paint on my sponge and I thought I would just give the ground a little more uh, color and uh, depth with the leftover paint that I had from the trees and I thought that that turned out pretty cool so I added on some brown and did the same for the foreground. No use wasting that paint, right? There we go, it's looking good.
Okay, now we're going to try and figure out where to put the tissue paper that has the windmill on it. And just clearing up my desk a little bit for you. And here is the windmill. And I have it on the tissue paper. I was going to rip it, but I thought I better not use my scissors so I don't have a problem. And just cut it out real quickly. And then I'm going to use a damp brush and I am going to remove most of that tissue paper around the image so I don't have quite so much hanging on my piece there. And just a real uh, quick technique, just dipping my paintbrush into some water and just going around it real quick and getting rid of that tissue. It just melts for you with that water. So be very careful though so you don't rip your image. And I'm going as close to the image as I can. All right, looking good. And then we're going to put this down with matte medium onto the piece and then it's going to need to dry. So be very careful when you're putting it down and use a lot of matte medium. I've learned that if you don't use enough you will have that halo of tissue paper around your image and it just takes more work to get rid of it. So go ahead and make sure that you use, use plenty of your matte medium. That should be enough. And I'm going to gently place my tissue paper windmill into the matte medium and give it a cover over the top. Hoping that I don't rip it and that's looking real good. I'll definitely go over it with my black Stabilo pencil and I will use my charcoal pencil so it won't be as light as it is right now. Alright, we're just going to give some few more swipes, hopefully not wrecking that tissue paper, and we are going to let that dry. You can rush it with your heat gun, but I feel that it's uh, much better if you let it dry naturally. So here I'm using some of those same colors, and I'm just going to go around the edges where I can see a little bit of that tissue paper and I'm just blending those colors so that that white tissue paper disappears. And again, we are going to darken that um, windmill with our black Stabilo pencil and our charcoal pencil. But I just wanted to make sure that I had all of that white tissue paper um, gone and in. So it looks so much better when you do that. And I'm just using the leftover paint on my palette and a little bit of water. Yeah, that looks real good. Here I added uh, some blue and yep, I had way too much blue and just used a little bit of water and got rid of that. Blended it out so it's nice and cohesive for the piece. All right. Using my Stabilo pencil and going all over the windmill and then we will blend that out with the water. It really makes a difference here. I like how it makes it so much darker when you add the water to the Stabilo pencil. 
and it moves the pencil so nice. So really um, nice technique and very rewarding in the end how it turns out. It's a very dark, dark black, that Stabilo pencil. And I do have a brown one also and um, thinking about getting a few more of those for classes. I'm hoping that workshops and classes will be starting again soon. I will link my online class for you um, in the description um, below and that is going to be an online class that I did and it's practicing your mixed media background. You do uh, 12 artist trading cards and you do um, the mixed media backgrounds on the artist trading cards so that you get to practice different techniques and uh, quite fun. I think I have a $5 coupon I will in include for you also. So if you're interested in that, it would be, um, I think the total price with the coupon is like $15 or something. So yeah, that will be linked below. And if you do take it, let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from you. I needed to add some grass or ground below this windmill so it did not look like it was flying around from outer space. I am using the same colors out of my palette that I used before. I didn't want to introduce any other uh, colors and I am going to use my Stabilo pencil again and also my uh, General's charcoal pencil and that is a 6B Extra Soft and gave it a dry. Now I'm going to work on adding um, black shadows in those trees. Um, it, it definitely needed some work and I'm just going to play a little bit of music and let you watch that and I will catch you up before the end here, okay? Enjoy!
Okay, I'm back. So I did a lot of charcoal there, and you could see how I um, had my pencil right on the edge, you know, not using the tip, I'm using the side. And that allowed me to do a lot of shading with my pencil. Here I'm using my black chalk writer and I'm going around the edge for that black border that I absolutely love. It just frames the piece so wonderfully. And just remember that you're going to have to seal this piece if you're going to put it back in your journal. I use a polyacrylic spray that I get at Menards and I uh, spray that outside because it is kind of toxic and then I will go and use a new product that I absolutely love and it's called a cold wax medium after your piece is dry when you spray it outside with your polyacrylic spray you want to let it dry overnight and then give your piece a coat of this cold wax medium using just a um, dry cloth and just a tiny tiny little bit and that will save your pieces from sticking together in your art journal so super cool tip there and I will try and link that below for you in the description and if i forget to link anything just you know message me feel free i read all of my comments so i will get back to you definitely here i'm just adding a few more marks with my charcoal pencil to add a little bit more uh, interest to the bottom and also i felt like my trees were not bold enough in the background so adding some black uh, shading in my trees and you'll see I do it for the pine trees also and then I felt like I lost a lot of the green color so I am going to pull out my Soho pan no not pan pastels my Soho soft pastels and I am going to use those um, also and add back in some of that color the green that's needed in the trees so really super fun product and that is something that I purchased on Amazon and I will try to link that for you also um, it is something real nice to have in your stash here I was feeling that the blades on the windmill were not dark enough so I decided to go ahead and add charcoal back into those blades and it really made that um, windmill pop then I was happy I did that in the end and here's where I go ahead and I'm just kind of scribbling uh, black on the tree trunks there on one side where I thought that it would be uh, darker and um, blending it with my finger dabbing it up you know doing the dance as Sean Petit says doing the dance you know making it uh, come to life with the shading and the color and um, it certainly does in the end um, I'm looking at it right now while I'm talking to you and it, it really does come together in the end I definitely needed that uh, the little um, soft pastels that I put there in the trees so taking that extra time to finish the piece really makes it all uh, come together I will let you listen to music and I will again be back
so I did add my sentiment there it's just something that I cut out of a strip of paper that I had my sentiment says one day at a time I felt that that is very appropriate for what we are dealing with right now um, you know we're hoping that this uh, COVID pandemic is going to go away but then yet it's getting worse and people around us are getting sick and it's causing stress we're just um, try to take it one day at a time um, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to focus on what I need to do right now today and just try to uh, be healthy and be kind to others and we'll get through this we will get through this I, I really truly believe that and so I'm just adding a little bit of charcoal over that um, green that I used from my soft pastels and blending that with my finger and I decided to do some in that tree also because um, it wasn't drawing my eye over to that side of the piece so I felt that I needed to bring that green over to the side and I also brought some down to the bottom and that way it creates that visual triangle and it gets your eyes moving around the piece and I feel that that really works for the whole piece I hope you enjoyed this I will have some close-up pictures at the end here and I really really hope you uh, stop back on Saturday and we'll do something fun in an art journal something to do with art journaling so have a wonderful week and you know take it one day at a time we will get through this I so hope so have a great week bye